Today we're going to be port matching a Z6 intake manifold with a B18 throttle body, installing it in and taking it for a rip. Let's get started with this process. Alright, here we go. What's going on everyone? As you can see here, I got a Z6 intake manifold. I picked it up at the salvage yard at Budget Wrench Apart. Um, it's in Belton, Texas. So if you guys are really interested in getting some good parts, definitely hit a Budget Wrench Apart in Belton, Texas. Um, so this Z6 will flow better than the D15B7 manifold that's currently on my car. This was nasty. I actually uh, sprayed it down with some purple power and then ended up hitting it with the pressure washer. And this is how clean it is. I didn't scrub it in any way, shape, or form, and it came out pretty dang clean. I'll probably clean it one more time because there's still a little bit of gunk in there. Nothing crazy though. But today we're going to be port matching this uh, Type R throttle body to fit the Z6 manifold. What this is going to do, it's going to allow more airflow in. So as you can see here, when we open it, there's little metal uh, step up. You don't want the step up. That will hinder your flow. So what we're gonna basically be doing is using a Sharpie with this throttle plate open, we're gonna be marking it, and that mark will end up right here all the way around. And that'll let us know how much material we need to take off. So I'll be using this Craftsman uh, grinding stone set I got from Ace. I got some Ace gloves while I was there, cause why not? And this uh, Type R throttle body gasket, which I got from O'Reilly's for $3. So this will definitely help the flow of the car. These runners are actually thicker and longer than the D15B7. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, now there is two different ways you could do this. You could always just take this throttle body gasket right here and uh, put it on like this. Then just use the Sharpie and do it like this. And that method works really well as well. Um, or you could just put the throttle on and do that. This method is just a little bit easier. Um, and you can see that's the excess material that will need to be grinded off. So if we put the throttle body on and open it up, you should see the Sharpie marks. You see those Sharpie marks in there? That's how much material we need to take off. So we don't want it to have a step. We want it to be a smooth transition. Um, technically, yes, you could just throw this on there and it would start up and it would have more power than the current setup, but we want to get the most volumetric efficiency out of the turbo and the intake manifold, the entire air system. Basically what we'll be doing is carefully with these going around in a circle to widen this out. Um, this part right here might need a little extra attention just to kind of get it down a little bit farther, but so far it doesn't look like it's in a area of concern. Um, I've done this plenty of times before, so I just figured I'd show you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these out. Make sure not to go too far. All right, so since I couldn't uh, keep it still in case he's at work, I'm gonna have my son Jonathan here holding the intake manifold still while I uh, grind this opening. All right, so we're gonna test it up, see how this is coming along. Don't mind these scratches, a little bit of gasket seal can fix that. All right, so you can see in there, there's still a little lip. We gotta get that pretty much as level as possible with the throttle, so there's no step up. Um, obviously, we haven't even started on the top half yet, but we'll get to it. All 
All right, it's looking pretty good. I still have a little ways to go. It's getting kind of darker out and dinner's ready. But uh, as soon as um, I'm finished with dinner, I'll come back out, we'll turn this light on and uh, we'll keep going. It's not gonna probably take away all of this black material, but we can get, get it down to where the transition's smooth. So let me show you what the throttle looks like. Now you can kind of see back in there. It has a pretty decent transition where it kind of goes up. Um, we can make that a little bit smoother to so where it has more of like a, less of a step, more of a smooth incline. Um, and then we still have the other areas to do, like up in here and a little bit on that side. But overall, it's looking pretty good. You can kind of see up in here. You can kind of see up at the top left there. Um, it's pretty good. It's just the top right up in here and down over here that needs some attention still. So we'll go ahead and go all the way around it and keep going. All right, so we're gonna see where it sits at now. Um, now keep in mind that this black part right here that we use the Sharpie on, that part right there is only to gasket match it. Um, basically make it match the gasket that we put on there, which is pretty, pretty close. Um, doesn't have to be 100% perfect for that black part, but the throttle part is more importantly. So we're going to see where the throttle sits on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully get this gasket off and so I am bolting it down so we can actually see what it looks like crushed up against there so we can see if it will have any flow restrictions okay so we're gonna open it up and you can see right there it's looking pretty good there's not a huge step up anymore um, all the way up at the top section as well looks really smooth and really good it doesn't have a step it's more of a slow hill transition so that's what we're looking for now there is a small section on the bottom you can see there right in that area where you can see the sharpie we're gonna go ahead and show that area some attention but everywhere else looks pretty dang good uh, all the way through the sides and on the top so it's just that one little section right there so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that then we will uh, get this attached permanently So here it is, and as you can see, it's got a smooth transition through there. Um, looks pretty good. So now it won't have a flow restriction. It'll have a slight uh, uh, hill or a gradual uh, build up there. It won't be a step. So it should flow pretty dang good now, and that makes me really happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these flapper wheels. This here's 80 grit, and we'll just go around that, making it smoother and less jagged edged. I have a 220 grit right here we'll go around and then we'll finish it up with a polisher which will just go around and make it smooth so I'm gonna go ahead and do that Alright, so there it is with the wire wheel. It's nice and smooth all the way around. Well, as smooth as it needs to be. Uh, it looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and put the gasket on, put the throttle on, and bolt it all down. Then we can get the uh, manifold swapped in the car. We'll have just a little bit more airflow. This is a really cheap but effective mod. This uh, intake manifold with everything costs like $37 from the salvage yard. Uh, it's not bad since it's a Z6 manifold. They're pretty hard to find unless you have a z6 and this is a type r throttle body which i got this throttle body for free uh, from a buddy of mine so i just want to give him a shout out and say thanks man i uh, really appreciate it he's my neighbor and my friend the one that lives up the street with the green civic um, so he let me have this so thanks steven really appreciate it um, we're going to go ahead and get all this bolted together we'll pull the b7 out and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two oh yeah i 
can't forget to tell you that I will be pressure washing this again to get all the metal shavings out. Highly recommend that step. Alright, so now we're going to compare the difference between the Z6 and the D15B7 intake manifold. Now, first glance, not much different, but there actually is. So I'm going to show you the exacts. So we're going to start with uh, runner number four. We're just going to measure it and compare it to the D15B7, which is obviously a 1.5 intake manifold for a non-VTEC, and this is for a 1.6 with VTEC. So clearly this one's going to be able to draw in more airflow. All right, so we have the uh, gauge here zeroed out, and we're going to actually measure it. All right, so it's 42 millimeters on the D16Z6. All of them are the exact same numbers. So we're going to go over to the D15B7, zeroed back out. We're going to measure it. And this one says 38.8 millimeters, which obviously the Z6 manifold at 42 millimeters is much, much bigger. Now throttle body sizes, obviously the D15B7s isn't gonna be as big as the B series. So we're gonna measure 57.5 millimeters on this throttle body. So we're going to zero this out. Um, this is a B series throttle though, so it is much bigger. All right, 61.5 millimeter throttle body on the B series one. So definitely more air is going to come in this one, which is great for the turbo setup. So moving on to the next part that is different. One of the easiest ways to spot a fake Z6 because people will sell Z6 manifolds and say this is a Z6 when it's clearly not. Um, you can take your hand, put it like that, thumb all the way around, and it goes all the way down here. Now on the Z6, you can't do that. Your thumb stays straight because it's flat there. So that's definitely the first way to tell if it's a Z6 just by looking at the manifold because it's flat and this is rounded. So I'm going to get a size of the runner here. Just a rough size, 50.9 millimeters of the runner size, and we're gonna do a runner size on this one. 41 millimeters, super tiny runners compared to the Z6. The performance upgrades from the Z6 slapped on any D-series heads will be significant because there will be more airflow. So this is one of the first cheapest mods I do to any D-series that I have. Um, I try to get a Z6 manifold and just throw it on. Just throwing it on will give you a couple horsepower. Um, but we're basically just going to swap over the Honda data map sensor and, uh, you know, like the coolant line, stuff like that. And I already have the fuel rail with the injectors on the car, so those will just plug right in using the same exact uh, fuel rail because they're identical for the B7 and the Z6. So I'm going to go ahead and switch everything all over and then we can uh, put this in the car and go see how it does. So 
I topped the coolant off, um, made sure everything was good. So now we're gonna start it up, look for leaks. I've already primed the fuel system. Um, so here we go. All right, there it is. I don't see any fuel leaks, coolant leaks. Seems to be running pretty smooth. The RPMs kind of sound low. So we'll let it warm up a little bit and then we're gonna go on Han data and uh, dial in that nap sensor because it will be off of adjustment since I had to put the nap sensor on. But overall it doesn't sound bad at all. So we'll let it warm up for a little bit and then uh, go to Han data. All right, so it's at operating temperature. Air fuel still look really good. So I'm basically just gonna go to parameters real quick. We're gonna go right here where it says read. We're gonna read it right now with me not pushing the throttle, it's at 0%. Now flooring it and reading it, um, I will shut the engine off for that, just so we're not revving to the moon and back. Um, we have to make sure to go back online. Now I'm gonna floor it and hit read, and that'll give us our zero to 100% range. Okay, now we'll hit upload. And the TPS is set, so we'll go to the graph, or the display, my bad. See how it says 0% throttle? I'm not touching the throttle. Now I'm gonna floor it, 100% throttle. See where it's idling at, and make adjustments if needed. Uh, basically, we have the idle right here. We can adjust the air idle control valve's duty cycle, um, but yeah. We're gonna see where it's idling here in just a second. There we go. Much better. It's real smooth idle, and everything looks pretty good on the uh, computer. And uh, do a pool real quick. Uh, Michael went through and adjusted some of the tune since things will be kind of off. Um, he set me up to 18 pounds of boost as well, so we should see how it does. Um, this is a stock. Y7 blocks, dock Y7 head. Hopefully this one will hold the power of 18, 18 pounds of boost, so. All right, here we go. Michael uh, instantly hopped on and he's adjusting some stuff because the air fuels are just a little bit lean for 18 pounds and if you see that column there that's 18 you follow it down right there so we touched 18.6 I believe and then the 16 um, yeah so definitely check the pin comments I will uh, pin a comment below how you can get a hold of me on Instagram if you guys ever want Michael to tune your stuff of course he charges but he is a lot cheaper than some and his tunes obviously speak for themselves. So definitely check that out. So we're gonna go ahead and get out and uh, go over some stuff. Oh yeah, guys, before I forget to show you, I got my hood prop latch from the salvage yard. I ended up pulling one off successfully. So now it's not gonna ruin my paint job. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go over the engine details. D16Y7, completely stock, head and block. Stock D16Z6 intake manifold, ported, um, on the throttle side with a type R throttle body. Also, forgot to show you that. I don't hook up the lower coolant lines. Now you can't see it. The lower coolant line right here under the throttle body, I don't hook those up. I just bypass it 
It allows for cooler intake temperatures. I don't live in a colder climate here in Texas where the throttle will freeze shut, so I just bypass it completely. Um, so that if you live in somewhere where it gets really cold all the time, I definitely don't recommend bypassing it. But if you live somewhere where it's warm enough, you can uh, bypass the throttle body for the coolant. It'll lower your intake temperatures. Um, we've got stock fuel rail, which is good for over 600 horsepower. Uh, that's been proven. Um, of course, upgrading it wouldn't hurt. Aftermarket fuel pressure regulator with the PSI right around 45 PSI. 255 cc precision injectors they're from ebay like 150 200 something like that um gt30 twin scroll from ebay log manifolds from amazon it costs 50 bucks i had the wastegate just sitting in the back um has a four bolt down pipe you knock a cat back exhaust wall 255 pump uh, amazon intercooler kit with obviously the intercooler it's a smaller intercooler, but it's working really well. The blow-off valve is an eBay blow-off valve, like $20. But yeah, she pulls pretty hard, 18 pounds of boost. Um, if it wasn't for the clutch slipping, I would have been able to get on it and stay on it. But I kept letting off, if you didn't notice, I kept letting off and getting back on it. Um, so yeah, that's just because the clutch was slipping. But I'm going to get a 6 buck Stage 5 with a lightweight flywheel and a short gear transmission. And this thing will really rip when I'm done doing that, when I get that stuff in. So next on my list of things to do is those stock brakes and pads are coming out. And we're going to be putting drill and slotted in. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified of every upload. Uh, we're going to be putting these bad boys on. Now, they're not big, huge brakes, but they're better than the factory one. We'll do a big brake kit eventually, but for right now, these will work fine since the stock ones are really old and worn out and stopping from 120 down to 65, 70, and it really puts some wear on them. So definitely going to need these put in. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to get in the comment section and uh, I'm going to have a pinned post so you can get a hold of me on Instagram and uh, send me a message or just chat about my swap or whatever. But definitely hit up Michael if you want to tune. He's really good and he's affordable. So. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Got some work to do. So till then, stay safe. God bless and stay awesome.